254-339-1122. The Sikkim 365 Radio Text Line is sponsored by Riverbend Liquor and Wine with the most extensive variety of craft beer in Waco. A hidden gem on Lakeshore Drive and 19th Street. All right, thanks to uh, Chris Sienko. Uh, coming up, Monique Billings, who's on the Atlanta Dream roster. I had a chance to visit with her yesterday evening about Nikki Collin, the new head coach of Baylor University, and uh, Michelle Vopel and I. We talked a little bit, Michelle, I think it was on Sunday afternoon, about just kind of where they might be in the search. Did you have Nikki Collin on your radar at all? Uh, not really, but then once I heard it, I wasn't totally surprised. I know that um, Coach Collin had looked at potentially getting a, a college job last year, so I know it was something that was released on her radar. But uh, no, it, it, that that I think they did a pretty good job, I would say, um, of, of keeping this uh, pretty quiet until they were ready to announce it. Michelle, what do Baylor fans need to know about Nikki Collin as she comes in to take over Kim Mulkey? She's a really passionate coach, so that will seem familiar to Baylor fans. Um, she's she's somebody who I think um, very much loves the game of basketball, and and that might sound like, well, don't all coaches. But, I mean, she really loves it. She's somebody who will just sit down with you and chat um, on, on any level of basketball. She just really enjoys breaking down the game. Um, she's got a... a like I said, a very passionate personality. I think she, you know, connects really well with her players. And she's had a lot of experience, um, you know, being both an assistant uh, and, a, and a head coach, um, you know, at, at multiple stops in the college level, um, then assistant with the Connecticut Sun before she became the dream head coach. So, you know, she she's somebody who I think that the fans will, they, they will uh, connect to, I think. I think she's that type of coach that, she wants to connect with the fans, and in some ways, I think, um, you know, nobody nobody is Kim Mulkey, that's for sure, but I think the passion that she coaches with will, will sort of be reminiscent of the way that uh, Coach Mulkey coached. Michelle, I know coaching changes like this, especially in women's basketball, don't occur very often. And we've seen once proud programs maybe not have the same success after, you know, the legendary head coach uh, leaves. What are some of maybe the common missteps or things that – you feel like she needs to avoid maybe uh, from the outset, uh, you know, as far as the, the path and the direction of the program and keeping it on track? You know, obviously you can't try to be um, somebody that you're not. And I, I think if there's one thing about, about Nikki, it's that she's not going to be, um, she's very, very confident in who she is. So she's not a, a coach who's going to come in and try to replicate um, Coach Mulkey. Uh, we all know what the key is. The key is recruiting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Nikki's, uh, you know, has been at Arkansas, Louisville, Colorado State, um, Florida Gulf Coast, uh, Ball State for a little while. So she's been at successful college programs and understands the recruiting game. But, you know, Baylor's been exceptional at that. Um, and then with developing players to play for in Coach Mulkey's system. I think one thing that obviously, you know, should be a, a benefit is, you know, she's, you know, Nikki's coached in the WNBA, so she can, you know, talk to players about if you want to get ready to play in the WNBA, I know exactly what that takes, you know, because I've done it. And, uh, you know, so I think that she can use that in terms of, um, from a recruiting standpoint, you know, what I don't know, and, um, you know, I don't know if, if any of this has leaked out um, in the last few hours or not, you, you would know better than I, but it's exactly what her staff's going to look like, mm -hmm. because I think that's going to be a big big part of this i mean Bay kim talks about how important her staff was to her and so i, I think that's going to be something to watch but um but really from a personality standpoint i think they hired somebody who's got a really strong personality which i think they needed after after coach mulkey left so they have that and now it's going to be a matter of uh how well that um coach colin and her staff can recruit i really think that's the, the biggest key what did it say to you, Michelle, that even before her name came up, that there was a chance when the transition began that you could have lost half your roster, and obviously the transfer rules are different, and some of the players on their roster are, are just brand new, inside a year transfer, so that would be not so complicated, but you, you kind of get 
a feeling that some of them could leave, and they lost Hannah Gusters, and they might lose uh, someone on, they've lost some of the staff, and maybe even Satya, uh, which wouldn't be a surprise, but that Nalissa Smith said, we're not going anywhere, basically. She didn't say that specifically, but she said, ready for the next challenge. What did that say that some of those who know how good this core team is were ready to move on no matter who was hired as the next head coach? I, I would think that says that Melissa really has loved her time at Baylor. And, you know, we both know that that isn't always the case with, with young people anymore. They go to college, a lot of them, specifically for a coach. They don't necessarily have it doesn't seem like they have that much of a relationship with their community or their school. You know, everything's about basketball and the staff that they're, that, that they're playing for. And, and then, you know, now we see, you know, um, players like, like for instance, like a Nancy Mulkey, and I'm not saying she's at Smith level or anywhere close to that, but, you know, is from um, Texas and, and played at Rice and won a, a WNIT championship. And then when her coach left, she's going all the way to Seattle you know, which is a huge move for one year. That would tell me, like, that there's a lot of connection with that coach. Now, that doesn't mean Melissa didn't have a strong connection with him, because I think we all saw from social media, she was, you know, it, it was really tough for her. But I think it says she wants to finish what she started at Baylor. Um, and you've got to admire that, because you don't see that as much anymore. You do see kids leave with one year left, or, you know, as, as graduate transfers. So I think... Um, you know, maybe she says, look, this is the place I've been. I've been happy here. Um, I think she's very well maybe the best player in college next year. And she wants to finish the job she started there. I think no matter where she goes, she's going to be, you know, she'll be a lottery pick in the WNBA. But but it is kind of, I don't know, sort of admirable to see her decide, you know, I'm going to I'm going to stay here and finish what I started. Rochelle, nobody covers women's basketball like you. And when you have a coaching search, you know, obviously someone like you is going to be able to kind of rattle off a list of these people fit or these are the people they should talk to. How difficult was this one? One, because of the way that Mac Rhodes does things and that he essentially goes into a, a cave until he hires a coach. Uh, and we've seen that several times throughout his tenure here uh, to, to figure out. And just because, you know, Baylor's kind of a different thing, given that, you know, a Hall of Fame coach is leaving. It's a, a, a small private school and all of those things that went into this. I think you're absolutely right. Those, those things all do make it a little more complicated. I mean, this is a religious um, college. And so uh, there would be some people I don't think would be comfortable going to Baylor and some people at Baylor might not be comfortable um, hiring. I really wish that wasn't the case, but I think re in reality, uh, it probably is the case. Then you have the fact that, yeah, you're following somebody who's not just enormously successful, but has one of the biggest personalities, I think, in all the college sports. So some people would be like, ah, I don't want to do that. That's, uh, you know, that's a, that's a recipe for, um, you know, for, for falling short, if you will. And that's where I think because Nikki Collin is such a confident person, um, I can't overstate that enough. She really has a lot of confidence, not in a bad way, but she really believes in herself. I think that's probably something that stood out to Mac Rhodes because you kind of need to have that to, to say, okay, hey, I know I'm following a legend here but that's not going to stop me from wanting to do this job. All those things together, though, as you said, did make it complicated to try to figure out who they would hire. Because maybe some names you'd think, oh, yeah, this might be a person who'd be a really good fit for a, for a big job, but maybe not a fit for Baylor, to be honest. You know, Michelle, you mentioned uh, some of the feedback, and I, I, you do cover the WNBA heavily, and you also cover women's basketball, as Paul said, as well as anybody what was did you, can you kind of share a little bit of reaction from the women's basketball circles? Uh, you and I had a conversation Sunday, and you mentioned how it would be hard because there's only a certain maybe a handful of people that that would fit what Baylor is and who they want to be, right? As far as the um, uh, as far as those who could be candidates, what was the reaction? Was it overwhelmingly positive, or was it like we'll see what happens? I think there is, um, and I'm just trying to be, you know, as straightforward as I can. You know, there are a lot of people who are concerned or bothered um, that they feel like there is an anti-LGBTQ um, attitude um, at, at Baylor. And when you consider how many people that are involved in the women's basketball world are part of that community, and that includes myself. 
um, you sometimes there there are elements of Baylor that concern you. Uh, there's just no getting around that in in the women's basketball community, and that's, they're not the only school. I know I feel like with what I've read um, in Baylor's handbook that they have tried to, if you will, I, I don't want to I don't want to say this wrong, but I think they've tried to say we want to be open to people of of no matter what their background is, no matter what their, um, um, you know, sexual orientation is, we want people to feel comfortable here, but it's not a place that everybody would feel comfortable. And so what I saw was some people say, how is coach Carlin going from an organization that is, that is, you know, the WNBA that is so positive and, you know, is one of the leading professional organizations and recognizing, you know, pride, for instance, going from there to Baylor. And I think that's a question she may is going to be facing. Um, so I think some people ask that question. And the other thing was some people look at this and say, hey, what does this mean when a coach is willing to leave the WNBA, you know, two weeks before the season starts to go to Baylor? Now, that doesn't surprise me because there is simply more job security and more money in the college game. So, you know, it, it, as you guys said, and I think you, you've covered it expertly, it's, it's a little more complicated than, than just an average coaching search. And the way all of this went down has been, you know, one of the more interesting things I've seen in women's college basketball all the way going back to, you know, when the first rumors cropped up that, that maybe Tim Mulkey might be leaving. Michelle, thanks for your time. Uh, we appreciate it so much. Thanks for being a part of the show. And also, anytime you've been on with us before about, and a lot of it was over what Baylor had done under the Kim Mulkey era and, and other stories in basketball as well. Michelle Vopel, national writer, columnist for uh, ESPN on women's basketball at both the pro and also college level. Now, coming up next, uh, when I talked to Kalani Brown as the show was winding down yesterday, she gave me a number to Monique Billings, a forward for the Atlanta Dream. And I had a chance yesterday evening to, to record an interview with her about uh, Nikki.